This is some low-key, really big and terrible news. So this is from NPR. A federal judge has postponed Trump's March 4th election interference trial. A federal judge in Washington formally postponed Donald Trump's March trial on charges of plotting to overturn the 2020 election as a key legal appeal from the former president remains unresolved in the courts. U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin on Friday vacated the March 4th trial date in the case brought by Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith, but did not immediately set a new date. The move opens the door for a separate prosecution in New York charging Trump in connection with hush money payments to a porn actor to proceed first. By the way, that is the weakest case against Trump. Uh, that case has long been seen as arguably the least legally perilous of the four indictments Trump faces, with the alleged misconduct less grave than accusations of mishandling classified documents or plotting to subvert a presidential election. The postponement in Washington comes as a federal appeals court has yet to resolve a pending appeal from Trump, arguing that he is immune from prosecution for actions he took in the White House. So... That's all those goofy arguments that we heard where, you know, the Trump's um, Trump's defender was basically saying, well, he can kind of maybe legally order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate his political opponents because if the House doesn't impeach him and the Senate doesn't convict him on that impeachment, then you can't actually criminally charge him for that. I mean, they were arguing that the president is just totally above and beyond the law in every way, shape and form. And it appeared like the judges were not buying that argument even in the slightest. In fact, one of the judges really grilled Trump's guy. Uh, so they say, it is not clear when the three-judge judge panel might rule. I don't know what's taking them so long. This should be the most obvious conclusion of all time. But a ruling in favor of prosecutors that permits the case to move forward is expected to be appealed by the Trump team, likely resulting in additional delays. So this is their strategy, guys. Their strategy, the Trump team's strategy is uh, delay, obfuscate, appeal, delay, obfuscate, appeal, and just punt on it time and time and time again. Hopefully to the point where, from their perspective... Um, this is after the primary has concluded. This is after the general election has concluded. This is after inauguration day when they think Trump is going to be sworn in. And then in that scenario, you know, everything gets put on hold because they wouldn't, they, I don't think they would drag a sitting president out of the White House in handcuffs. Once you actually are president, the only way to remove you is through a proper impeachment that gets convicted in the Senate. So, uh, it looks like their, their strategy, at least for the moment being, is working. Delay, 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 appeal, 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 punt, 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 and just kick the ball far enough down the field so that it's, hey, it's already too late, he's already in the White House again. From both sides, timing is of the essence. Trump, who faces four indictments and 91 felony counts, is looking to push his criminal cases back as he enjoys frontrunner status in the race for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. Smith's team, meanwhile, is hoping to be able to prosecute Trump this year before the November election. If Trump is elected... While the case is pending, he could presumably order the Justice Department to drop it and could potentially try to seek a pardon for himself. So now, understand something, guys. This stuff is now we're in uncharted territory, and that's the thing that's scaring me so much about this current political moment, is that we are in uncharted territory in a number of different ways. And I feel like one way or another, come hell or high water, we're going to have some sort of a constitutional crisis, which is fundamentally unresolvable and could lead to violence in the streets. Uh, it's a really, really delicate, fragile situation that we're in. The Washington case had been expected to take take uh, place first, but it has been delayed for weeks by Trump's appeal on the grounds that he is shielded from prosecution, a claim that has been vigorously disputed by Smith's team. The appeals court heard arguments on January 9th and appeared skeptical of a Trump lawyer's position. Though the court has said it intended to work quickly, it has not yet issued a ruling. The judge in the New York case, the first of four indictments filed against Trump last year, has long resisted defense demands that he postpone the March 25th start date in light of the conflicting trial date in Washington, figuring correctly that the former president's legal calendar might change as the trial neared. Trump is due back in court in Manhattan on February 15th for a pretrial hearing where final details are expected to be ironed out. All signs point to the New York case starting on time. Trump's lawyers and prosecutors have been discussing jury selection procedures with the judge, and some witnesses have said they've been told to be ready to testify. So it looks like that the weakest case is now going to go first. Um, and if everything else continues to be delayed, that's a terrible place to be in. Because the real, the real actual hefty punishments are affiliated with the other case. Now, the Georgia case has its own set of problems now because Fannie Willis had an inappropriate relationship with the prosecutor who she picked to go after Trump, and that's under scrutiny, and Lord only knows if that leads to this case unraveling. So the D.C. case, in my opinion, you know, the Jack Smith and, you know, I read through that whole indictment. I think he's got the best case. Um, and in that scenario, 
you know, the classified documents, I think that's a slam dunk case, to be honest with you. And then beyond that, the election subversion case. Um, I really want the Jack Smith case to go first, and I really want it to happen ASAP. And the fact that they successfully punted, at least on, on this portion for a while, that worries me that you're not going to get a conclusion before Inauguration Day, never mind the general election, which means effectively it's going to be null and void because after he's president, he can serve another four years, and then even if the legal trials pick up after that, assuming he's still alive, you know, uh, it's too late. He's already been president for another four years. So the timeline here is becoming a real, real issue. Because let's face it, man, the fact of the matter is, I think the only way you can almost guarantee that Trump doesn't win is if he's found guilty on some of the 91 criminal charges before the general election. Right? That's what I think. And it looks, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, And there, you know, and if he, he's, see, this would be no man's land. If he's found guilty, we have the election, he either wins or loses, and then he's found guilty before Inauguration Day, but after the election. If he wins, and then it's like he's found guilty before Inauguration Day, what happens then? I don't know. This stuff is all, we're, we're, we've never been here. Ever. And it feels like we're on the Titanic. Iceberg straight ahead. So, I don't know, man. But this is bad news. Bad news for the country. Good news for Trump. That just by virtue of the timeline here, he, it's looking more and more likely that he'll be able to skirt accountability just long enough to maybe pull off an election victory. Potentially. Ooh, it's, it's, woo, it's terrible stuff. All right, guys, that's the show. Everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively in the algorithm. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you can also support the channel if you're so inclined. There's a Patreon link below. Uh, much love to everybody who does support. They pay two bucks a month or five bucks a month or whatever it is. It helps out tremendously. Remember, I've never had a conversation with an advertiser. You guys make that possible. Some people also tip through YouTube with the thanks button. Thank you to everybody who does that. Uh, it means the world to me. really keeps us going. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys, man. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I will be back tomorrow. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.